How's it going everybody? I am back with yet another short and to the point guitar and chords tutorial. Today it's Jets to Brazil with King Medicine. This has always been one of my favorite songs by my favorite band of all time. So um, let's uh, get down to it. Standard tuning. Uh, a lot of the songs on Orange Rhyming Dictionary are in drop D, but not this one. So basically, um, I'm just going to show you the chords first and then I'll show you the leads. I mean, I'll just try to mix and match everything. All right, so we got the beginning. It's just an E chord. <laughs> held out for a long time while the lead's playing and then it's going to play A and then it's going to play A minor now the best part I'll, I'll try to combine the chord sounds by hitting just uh, one string alright so we got uh, and then when it goes to the A part you're going to do this um a major and then A minor thing. So, um, you know, again, the intro. Six, five, seven, five, five, seven, five. Okay, so now we're leading into the verse. And let me know if, this, if any of this is confusing. I could do a follow-up video uh, going, extending the length of the video, but I'm trying to, you know, keep all these videos short so as to not waste uh, any of your time. All right, so um, when it leads into the verse, it's going to go. But instead of doing all this on one string, which is what I uh, did before, you're going to do this cool dissonant thing that Blake Schwarzenbach does so well and, you know, with his genius. See how you get that dissonance? Just like um, Morning New Disease does in the beginning. So this is the G string and the B string. 13, 10, 13, 12... 13, 10, 13, 11 in G. So now when we go into the verse, this is easy as hell. It's just a bass guitar. So all you're going to do is just kind of hold the E string open. <laughs> you know, let, let uh, Jeremy kind of uh, move the verse around. Then you're going to play the A string open. And then you're going to do the same thing. You know, basically four bars. So then you're going to go into this part again, two times, into verse two, um, again, just hold the A, or hold the low E string, and then hit the A string. Now the second time this passes, you're going to do some cool licks. So you're going to do the same dissonant thing, this is going to be the G string and B string, this is going to be eight and five. Um, then 9, 7, and then A, 11, 9, and then 13 and 10. So I, I love that part so much. He just keeps like building the tension and, and also keeping the melodic and harmonic context intact, which is so fucking awesome. Um, so basically, you know, again, just to review that little part. Five, nine and seven, and then when it changes to the A, uh, eleven and nine, and then thirteen and ten. So then uh, I think it's gonna go uh, this again, maybe really quick. I can't remember. I, I like the arrangement's really crazy. Uh, but right after that second verse, you're just gonna do D. To A power chords. You can do the simple little smashing pumpkins kind of thing. 11, 9, 11, 9, you know, 11, 9, and then 7, right? And then you can do the same thing D to A. And then you're going to do this cool thing where you're just going to hold the E chord, but the G sharp is going to be really present at the top, the third of the chord. Now, when you go into the tell me how you do that uh, crazy trick part, uh, 
F sharp power chord to A minor bar. And then this again. And then now we're in verse three. Now here's the awesomest part because he's doing this crazy natural harmonic thing. It took me a little bit uh, to figure this out, but basically Jeremy's playing E and A just like uh, he did before. You know, but this time you're gonna hit um, the fourth fret of the D string with a natural harmonic, which is an F sharp note. And then when, when Jeremy switches to A, you're just gonna go up a string and you're gonna keep it kind of muted. So it's fourth fret natural harmonics on the D and G strings. It just makes sense because it's an F sharp tonality and then that's a B tonality or a B harmonic that's going against the E and A parts. So if you hear it with the with the drone, check it out. And then A. It's so good. It took me a little bit to figure that out. And then, you know, it just does it long time. Blake might be moving around, you know, doing that a little bit. I'm not sure, but that definitely is a solid thing that happens. And then uh, after that, you're going to do this riff just once. And then right into the D, to the A, to the Smashing Pumpkins thing, right? Same thing. Tell me how you do that crazy trick again. F sharp, A minor bar. Uh, and I, I don't think he does the, the little riff. He just kind of holds it out on this time. And then one more D A move. To the Smashing Pumpkins thing. think it's gonna do the that it might it might do it longer I again I can't remember it's so hard to remember the arrangement as I'm doing these videos but basically uh, this is how the song is gonna end so when it goes into the this little part you're gonna do G sharp octaves and then you're gonna play C sharp minor or C sharp bar chord to B to A, this is outro one. Now while that happens, you're gonna do fourth fret of the B string over the G sharp. And then you're gonna do the second fret of the high E on the B change. And then you're gonna do um, the fourth fret of the high E on the A change. So it's just gonna literally just be like a D sharp, F sharp. G sharp over the C sharp minor B A change. Then it's going to do the same chords. But it's a little different here, different order. C sharp minor A, F sharp minor A. It's going to go two times around, or the power chords is fine. So I know this video is getting a lot longer than I normally do, but it's just for Brazil. So while that's playing instrumental stuff, you're going to be doing B and C sharp octave slides. There's the F sharp, then the A. So I'll try to make it kind of... So then, uh, as it winds down, same exact chords, the guitar is going to come in and out, 
It's going to be four times of Blake singing over those chords. It, it's like mellow, I think, the first two times. You're following along. You can hear him sing. Yeah. And then it gets a little harder here. Sweet Avenue as well. It's basically just an A power chord, but just drop that second fret of the G string to the first fret. Awesome. Definitely, th this song doesn't get uh, enough love, seriously, because this is probably one of my favorite songs on Orange Rhyme and Dictionary. It's always been. It really hit me hard the first time I heard Orange Rhyme and Dictionary. I mean, obviously, I love all the songs, but that one specifically was just like, shit. And as I'm looking on Spotify, like the, the amount of plays, um, it's, you know, probably in the bottom, you know, uh, percentage of the plays. I mean, it's got 420,000 plays as uh, as of today. But, you know, Chinatown's got 5.5 million. C Anemone's got 1 point uh, or 1, 1 million uh, 80,000. Sweet Avenue's got 4 million. It's crazy how Chinatown's actually the biggest one. Um, but anyway. God, the, you know, still my favorite band. And as I pointed out in some other videos, I would love to get tons of tattoos as sleeves, but I can't afford it. Uh, not for a long time, but I got this uh, in 2000. Was it early 2005? Oh, man. So good. Definitely the, basically the only band tattoo I have. <laughs> so obviously they're my favorite. If you found this video helpful, I really appreciate a like, a thumbs up. Um, you know, you know how it works. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm happy to do a lot more videos like this. Every day I'm trying to do a guitar tutorial, uh, you know, to, just to save you time looking for tab, trying to find, you know, I try to do a lot of indie songs that aren't easy to figure out or, you know, just, um, just they're awesome. <laughs> they don't really yeah, get enough love. So go listen to this uh, song and this album if you've never heard it or if you've never heard of the band before, but you like the riffs. Awesome stuff. Anyway, I'm babbling. I'm a little tired. It's like uh, 2 in the morning. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember to say this at the end of each tutorial. Uh, I do lessons over Zoom. Um, I am really cheap. I have been doing this for a, a number of years. I have a lot of satisfied parents, students, uh, testimonials, referrals, whatever you need. Um, I can do lessons worldwide. doesn't matter. Um, the only language I speak is English, sadly. Yes, I am American and dumb. No. <laughs> but... I'm, I'm one of the good Americans, I, I promise. Um, anyway, yeah. So if you're a Just Brazil fan, if you love indie rock, um, I am your indie rock teacher. So let me know. Um, reach out and hope we can connect up. So again, uh, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. All the love to every Just Brazil fan out there, Jawbreaker fan, any fan of Blake is a friend of mine. So uh, thanks again for watching. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, stay cool. Be kind always. Pay it forward. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks so much.